there are 100 billion neurons in, in, in the human nervous system. Um, and most of those are located within the central nervous system in the brain and spinal cord. And um, they have, will have their cell bodies. That's the, nor the, the part of the cell that's shared with most other cells with the nucleus, mitochondria, uh, and all the places that make protein synthesis um, um, in, in that cell body. And in addition to that, there are dendrites, long processes coming into the cell body that bring electrical signals in. And then there is a single axon that comes out of that cell body and takes the electrical signal onto the next cell. And that axon can be very long, anything up to one meter long in a human. Okay, so like any other cell, um, uh, the axon has to stay alive. Um, carry out um, um, ATP synthesis to, to, to keep processes going within it and to deliver um, components to the synapse at the end of that axon to carry mm. out this uh, synaptic transmission there to make new neurotransmitter chemicals. Um, and everything that does that, all the enzymes uh, and all the organelles, the mitochondria and so on, all have to be delivered uh, by a process called axonal transport. That takes place along rails, if you like, which are, are made of microtubules, and it involves motor proteins, or ATPases, which drive the energy for the transport processes. So they're pushing uh, these particles along. They're actually pushing in both directions. Things have to go out and things have to be recycled, and that axonal transport process is essential for the axon to survive. Um, a very wide range of things. In fact, it's, it's, it's very common in a, in a lot of neurodegenerative disorders for axonal transport to be impaired for, for one reason or another. Um, some of those are inherited. There can be inherited defects in the microtubules or in the motor proteins that, that carry that out. Um, there can be toxic disorders, and that a, a good example of that would be in cancer chemotherapy, where the drugs that attack the microtubules in cancer cells also have a very significant side effect of attacking microtubules uh, in the axons and causing peripheral neuropathy. Um, uh, inflammation uh, in multiple sclerosis would be an, another example of, of what interferes with the axonal transport process. So typically what happens is that the ends of the axon, the, the far ends, what we call the distal ends, die back. Uh, and the, the, the part that's furthest from the cell body is the part that's hardest to maintain and if anything goes wrong with the delivery of those uh, uh, cargos, molecular cargos inside the axon, that's the part that suffers first. And typically what we see is branched axons, they're of extreme distal ends, there's a lot of branching, those branches thin out uh, as one after another they die and eventually the, the axon length starts receding. Uh, and, uh, uh, in the very worst case, of course, that results in death of the whole cell. But typically, uh, a, a large number of axons' terminals are lost, uh, and a much smaller number of neuronal cell bodies are lost in neurodegenerative disease. In the, in the case of a spinal injury, that's, of course, a very sudden and, and very traumatic event that will lead to very quite rapid degeneration of axons beyond the site of the injury. Uh, and in the worst case of spinal injury, of course, a, a, a failure to, to transmit um, um, action, uh, instructions for, for actions and sensory information back to the brain beyond that point. More, perhaps much more common than that would be slowly progressing disorders such as multiple sclerosis and diabetic neuropathy uh, um, as, as two examples where, where the axons will start to die at the distal ends and consequently will be the gradual loss of function uh, uh, um, when those axons are lost. So in diabetic neuropathy, for example, there's a, a loss of sensations at the distal ends uh, of, of the extreme ends of limbs, uh, hands, hands and feet, um, and this has a lot of consequences. So uh, diabetic neuropathy patients will often be carrying a significant traumatic injury to their legs and not even know about it, and that result, results in gangrenous um, uh, effects in the leg and, and quite often even leg amputation. It's, it's a, a very common cause of leg amputation actually in, in, in diabetic neuropathy. Well, we are, and others are researching on, uh, on mechanisms to, 
that, that take place during the g degeneration and hoping to understand enough about those mechanisms to, to develop drugs that can interfere with them. We're at the stage now where we have uh, a, a drug that can have an, eff an effect in cell culture on, on axon survival and, and starting to take that forward uh, to look at its effect in animal models. It'll be some time yet before that can make it into humans. Um, and in the meantime, we're hoping to identify other proteins that are involved in the degeneration mechanisms that are other potential drug targets, perhaps even better drug targets.